My name is Michael. I'm the CEO and co-founder of the Testament.io. So uh, we, along with, with Michael, which is the, the founder and author of the, the popular known CodeSub.js and CodeSubption framework, we together um, almost a year ago, we decided to, to make a next generation test management system that will change the current uh, market. Because we see from, from our perspective that the future of the test management it should be different because nowadays we see that the current test management systems are done in old style way. So they are uh, difficult to use and, and uh, you would need to make a, a lot of different customization to integrate with other tools. And it's, it's just uh, not easy to collaborate based on these uh, tools. So that's why we, um, we see that we would like to make some system that will manage our manual and automated test cases with shift left test and approach first. So because nowadays we have automated test cases, we have the continuous integrations, uh, we have a different tools that should be integrated between each other in, in our test management system. Right. So that that was the, the presentation. Let me just go to the to the uh, to the particular. If you have questions so far based, based on this information, you have, you have time uh, to ask any questions so far. Because currently, um, what I what I'm, would like to do, I just would like to go to the living, uh, uh, living demonstration. I will create the project. I will create the manual test cases. I will create a synchronized automated test cases we have prepared. Right Then I will execute. We will show you the analytics, reporting, all this stuff, that linkage, how, how it looks like. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask. If you have, just unmute yourself and ask the questions. Do you have so? Hi. Can you hear me? Yeah, I do. OK. Thank you so much. And thanks for having this session. Actually, uh, I was, I mean, when looking at your slide, I mean, in terms of the roadmap thing, mm -hmm. uh, you mentioned about the HR and exploratory testing. So do we know uh, when we are expecting this feature, I mean, yeah. Uh, exploratory, yeah, so exploratory, we we said it's it's, it's, it's not short term. So we uh, we discussed it should be somewhere in quarter one next year. So something like this. Okay, so good. And I'm assuming so it will be part of I mean, kind of the test route, right? Integrated uh, with the with the um, uh, no, you know, so uh, we're going to explore the test and we, uh, we have a lot of ideas. So in fact, we would like to build the, the, uh, the tool that when you execute your, your test case, so you can uh, build your test plan in, in, in the same in, in simultaneous way. You can build your test plan. You can uh, edit your description right during execution because, for example, you can have a um, context-driven testing, right, or session mm -hmm. session-driven, right. So then you can you can make some uh, editing. So you can add some test cases if you see that something doesn't work and you would like to extend your current test plan and with and your repository, you can add more uh, information and, and attachments. You, you see, so um, from our side, we see that there are different tools currently on the market, but they are separated because currently, yeah. okay, you, you, you can have, for example, one one tool to, to capture object. It, it's uh, stored on our GitHub. You can access this project if you want to. Um, so I just download this project here. So that is the project available on my local box. I will be using it for demonstration purposes, right? So to to move all your test cases to uh, to uh, to test match, so we would need to call one uh, button. So here the import of the automated test cases. We are choosing what framework and language we are using. We just need to copy this special line which is generated automatically generated for you and then uh and then you can actually right so and then uh, then you, we we can execute this on the command line where you have your test automation uh repository right here so i have my uh project here and i will execute this special command that is called the check test it will introspect all our test cases that we have in our project and if we, we this check that will found some 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 test cases, it will be sent 
to test map. We see that, okay, this data is sent and data is received by test map. So we will go back here. We see that, okay, some test cases are appeared. You see, just in one click, just in, in one click, the, the uh, automated test cases that is, uh, was available only just in the repository and was accessible just only to test automation engineers. Currently, they are available in, um, in a nice way through the tree. Okay, so it's the same. So we are mimic the same structure that you have on test automation site, right? And then you have you have the automated test cases synchronized with test management. Okay, so let's go and do some um, manual test cases. So we just synchronize the automated test cases. Let's just create a new a new uh, test suite. That is, uh, it will be, for example, home page. Home page, uh, home page um, testing, right? So it will be test uh, suite. Inside of this uh, test suite, we can add some test cases. So one, or test case two, or something like this. So, but it's it's, it's really boring just to add uh, by this way. So we can use the bulk edit functionality, for example, here. So let's assume that you have the uh, the planning session and you have your notes after, after your planning session or grooming session right so then let's 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 just imagine that you have created or just noted 10 test cases that should be created uh, in test management system we can just copy this list just easily we are pasting here so then we we have here we have a multi-select so we have special uh format here it's called the yaml Right, so then you can select everything format appropriately, and by these changes, we will create 10 more test cases just in one click. So I will press the apply, okay, and all these test cases will be created, you see? So that is the created, right? Test cases is just in one click, we created necessary test cases. So we have the manual test cases, and we have the automated test cases in the same way, right? So if you have your the whole team, uh, team, the, they can now work together in one system, right? Because the manual uh, okay, can can uh, see the what is automated and what is not. And from um, uh, automated team, you can see what is my case. You can automate it. Right. So I will delete this soon. This case is okay, so I will uh, go and reset the filter, right? So we have a uh, manual and automated test case. I will come back to the test cases. Uh, okay, so I just briefly just show you so the description. So once you have created your test cases, you can add some descriptions. Let me just add uh, some, some description with uh, markdown format. I will just copy and paste it here to not provide your time, right? So, uh, um so it's it's marked out here so uh, you can save it right so uh here you see you can add some text to to the test right so you can um define some text that can be used to select your test cases and execute your test cases if you would like to add some uh, screenshots you can uh, you can actually copy this and paste by, from a clipboard and, and it's, it's, it's actually can be added in, and it can be inserted inside of the test cases. Right, so I will save it, right? So we have a description. Based on this description, as you may see, we have a code template, you see? So we have added description to the manual test case. We also may, say, uh, may set some uh, priority that is the critical, for example, test case, right? And based on this, description we are creating you templates so you can just copy and paste this right and then just you would need to go and implement these particular steps right so all the attachments are stored here so if you would need to write so that you have a history of the changes all the stuff right so you have your manual test case and you have the automated test case let's go to the execution right so that's that is the, the execution stage right so from one side, you have in your team, right? You have the manual execution and automated execution. It's uh, nowadays we see that okay, if it's done diff if it's done s separately, so it's done in wrong way. So it should be in one place. 
and everything should be done in a way so you can merge the, the results because the, the management of stakeholders they would like to see just one common report right okay so from from one side let's just uh, execute the automated test cases we have prepared all the instructions you would need to follow to easily send all your results to test management system our so it's it's called the, the uh, reporter you would need to install it so i already installed it you just need to execute this execute this just only once right and then uh, you would need to add some specific configuration to your project to use this reporter it means that all the results that will be achieved by your execution will be sent to testnet right so then we would need just copy this execution line so for each of the automated test frameworks we have a different um, common lines that are generated for you so you just need to copy and execute it and that's all right so we are copying this right so then we are go to our terminal right so and then we will execute all our um test cases right so it has yeah it has uh, it's, it's been started right so we will go here and see that okay we have real time reporting see so um our test execution currently is is uh, is in progress you see so but you don't need to wait until the end to see the results right if you have a lot of test cases so currently we are we we, we have tested so far with 500 or 700 test cases right so and it was fine so you uh, can check your test cases if you have some issues with this automated test cases for example here we have one failed test you can immediately you can click on it and you see the results you don't need to wait until the end right so you see the the, the message you see a stack trace you have uh, the screenshots right so to understand where the, the the issue was and at the bottom um, you see that uh, what the code of this execution and if you have some attachments in you can see the attachments so you have um, all the information at your hands to understand what was the issue it's it's executing but let's just execute the test cases manually because we have some automated automated test cases right here not automated but manual i mean right so we can execute manual test cases in parallel so let's just execute all our manual test cases that we have we just need to press the launch okay and all our test cases are presented in this way so before uh so it was just uh the, the, there was a question regarding the exploratory testing so during this exploratory testing session we would like just to make the implementation here so where you have the execution stage you can add some extra test cases here you have some descriptions uh, at your right hand you see that what you would need to follow right so also if you would like to change this you can change this if you would like to put some results you can press some buttons or you can use some uh screenshot uh, not screenshot but uh, um, uh shortcuts that is shortcuts defined at the bottom right here right so if you would like to put some screenshots you can use the copy and paste so you can use the clipboard so if you would like to put some special um special um message right so you can you can define this message here and uh, after this it will be defined in the test report if you understand that okay so some test cases were incorrectly added to this test plan right so then you can click on this uh, small button and you can just remove this test case uh, from this execution right but anyway so let's assume that we have finished we see that some of these test cases are not finished but we would like to finish right so it means that all our test cases that is not executed it will be skipped right so it, it will be marked as a skipped right so here we have the results so we have the manual uh manual uh and automated results right here so you see we have a result that is the simplified one right um the report you can check that what was failed you can click on this filter and you see okay two, two test cases are failed you can check on it and check them uh, what was the issue right and also we have detailed report right that it's another representation of this of the same data right so you can you can go one by one right so by, by using the 
accounts, right? Record test cases and just look through all your execution um, status, right? So also we have um, good, really good capabilities here. You can publish the, the publish uh, this report to your stakeholder. For example, here, if you would like to make the public re report, right? So it will be publicly available like, like this one, right? So I can just copy this and I can mm, paste this to the incognito mode and it will it will be accessible you see so you'd have too much information here because it's just hidden due to the uh some confidential information can be defined in the description so you have a just general status but if you would like to see the details you would need to go to the full report and check the details right so um but anyway you have these capabilities by this link uh, everyone who has this link uh, can check the results right without accessing to the test map. Also, what we can have here, so I will execute one more time. So we have more the more results uh, on the test runs here. So we will also, I just, what I would like to show you that we have some uh, the parameterization. For example, here, yeah, uh, that is a test case that should be parameterized. It means that, for example, here you have um, some uh, step, uh, okay, so I have some URL and it should be through the parameter one, right? And then I see I see some text on the on the page, it should be parameter two, right? So that is the, it called uh, parameterized test case, right? Where you have the same scenario, but you have a different data sets which support this. So in effect, uh, when you go back, you have the add parameter capabilities. For example, here you can put the, google.com and then you, sh you should see some uh some message right like, like like this one or you can go to the uh yahoo right .com, and should be another message something like this right so that is the call the parameterized test case but even more so you have one scenario in effect it will be two test cases right so it during the execution state and even more so if you have a different um for example, cross uh, browser requirements, you can execute this one test case for different browsers at the same time, if you have a different uh, browsers in front of you. For example, here, let's go and create some specific test plan to execute parameterized uh, test cases, right here. So let's just create a test plan. Okay, so we will call it uh, Pram tests. We will uh, check this particular test case we would like to execute. That is the one test case, right? We will launch it. Okay, here we have a special a special box to define uh, what environments you are using to execute your test cases. Right here, so you can click on the plus button and you can define, for example, you execute on the Windows, you execute on the Mac OS, you execute on the Linux, for example, here, right? So that is the three configuration for you, uh, manual test cases right so then if you have it you can execute everything manually and in parallel it means that you have one parameterized test case that is one scenario and two data sets so it will be two two test cases and three environments it will be uh, uh, um, kind of right but we have two two data sets that is defined here and also we have a three different Different, three different environments where we should execute this test case at one place. You don't need to go to the different um, views, right, to understand what you need to execute. So you can go one by one and execute. That is, uh, you know, so before this execution, we call it uh, 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 the execution in sequence when you just would like to run all your test cases just in one environment. But if you would like to execute in all environment in a parallel, so one scenario, but for whole environments, right? So then you can have these capabilities right here. Okay, so we will finish it. So we have uh, these capabilities. You see, so on the, uh, on, for example, on the Linux, everything is fine. On the Windows, everything is fine, but on the uh, Mac OS, it's not, right? So, and we have a different um, strategies now. These three execution can be merged by some strategy, right? We call it pessimistic and optimistic strategy, right? So, by this strategy, it means that we combine results. Okay. Uh, so we we have, we have the results based on these results. Uh, 
can you can combine some results if you would like to for example here you would like to be to present this uh, that so we have the um, three and five so let me just show you okay it's manual execution and that is the automated execution right so we would like a combined report so in effect you can merge all this result by by right so we will merge the results right so and then we have then we have one merged result that is and by the filter so we see that okay so two test cases are uh, uh failed uh, by the uh, right this okay And two test cases failed on the and you can provide this link to stakeholders, right? I will uh, continue on this project. So, uh, what we would need to, to, to do to, to make the integration with Jira. So you would need to have a credentials, admin credentials on your side. So you would need to generate the API token special. We have a documentation you would need, you would need to go and check how to get this special API token. You would need to define these credentials and you are done. So um, now your integration is done with, uh, with Jira, but from another side, from a Jira perspective, from a marketplace, from a Jira marketplace, you would need to install Testomat plugin and you are done. So once you have done this, so let me just go to the, to the, let, uh, it's not the Jira, that is the Jira one, right? So let me just create a new, it's not also, hold on a second. Right. Right. Okay. Fine. So we are here. So uh, what I would like to do. So we see we currently have we have we have some some test cases. You see some test cases, and these test cases should be added to some. And these uh, test cases should be added uh, should be added to to some to some user story. So let's assume that you are using the the, the fact management system as Jira, and you are using the Confluence as a uh, documentation ma management system right so we will create for example here so that is the checkout user story for example we have three test cases here for example right so we have to do to make the linkage so as i said to you here with uh, uh with this particular test case right for a second let me just uh, wait for this refresh okay so that is that is the link so what we can do here so we have a lot of functionality prepared um in the jira because one of our corporate client using jira a lot so i would say so you can actually you can link one test case you can attach the jira issue okay and what it uh, does actually it it goes so uh, we see that okay one one uh, link uh, one uh, links uh, to the test suite is is here but if we'll go to the test we see that all the test cases all the test cases from this test suite is linked to this particular user story it means that if we will add if we will go back that uh, to this test suite and this test suite is linked to this particular jira user story right so then then it should be automatically pop up here so let me just refresh and test case number one should be automatically linked to, to this jira user story so um one second did so here we will go to the test case number one we see it's it's empty but from a jira perspective if if if, if we will save it okay we will save it we will go back and mention what type of the test cases you have so you can link here the also the automated test cases you can have the latest statuses it's five latest execution state per each test case right and then you have a priority you can see the the results and you can edit it right 
So also we have a capabilities, for example, here. So if you understand that you have just only one um, user story and to this user story, everything is added to test it fully, right? And you would like to execute all these test cases you can press the buttons close so you would need to have some credentials to access to it also for example to the jira you would need to have some credentials to access to it right but if you would like to access to your test cases without any credentials we are providing to you these capabilities that's called it's called the living documentation you should go to the settings and on the project settings you can enable living documentation you will have this public link so and this link is available to you so you can share with your whole team. No matter they do have credentials to the Jira or to the test mat, they do have this um, access to the test cases. So you see if you if you will click on uh, on some particular test suite, you see that description of the suite and some particular test cases, right? That is the cases we can expand all so you can see the description of all test cases so even more so from one side you have the automated test cases and from another side you have the manual test cases right in one place so uh let's just go and check okay that is the automated test case so to the automated test case we have a description and we have a code right and we have the attachment, right? So everything in one place, and you can you can use it. So even more, so that is the the special created this living automatically generated living documentation. But even more, if you're using, for example, some documentation system, I will show you based on the confluence, right? So um, some of our clients are using in this way. For example, here you have um, the requirements clarifications right so you have your user story defined on the jira but you would need to define more much more information regarding these requirements all these requirements are defined on the left hand and on the uh, right hand you have all your test case linked to this to this particular uh, particular uh, jira ticket id right so to make this done so you can use in effect so you can you are using so we have this uh, special command to copy embedded url or copy iframe url you can pass some uh, parameters inside of it i will show you in a second so here that is the url and then here you can define for example all the test cases are linked to some particular user story please uh, expand all here so it's defined please expand all and then and then you see so we have this nicely nicely uh, created the page so it's done through the iframe so let me just go to the uh, edit to the edit here so it, to, to display all this information all you need to go to do is go to the editing stage here you would need to put just only url and put some styles to display it nicely and it's all you are done all the information is displayed here so from one side you have a requirements clarification and from another side you have some test cases so um you can look through so it's you see it's it's uh, um it's really uh, it's really i would say most mostly used this uh, from a bdd point uh, of view so if you have the the your test cases written in a uh, human readable way right so your automated test cases right so then you can use this to describe your some clarify your requirements from one side you, you have a, some uh, requirements from another side it's called it executable specification you have some examples which is executed and you see okay it's executed and, and it's fully done okay so that is the, that is the, the living documentation. So what more? So we have we have a really nice and interesting um, in the integrations with continuous integration. So um, here I already I already set up to not to waste your time with uh, Jenkins and GitHub. So to make this done, you also we have a uh, we have a documentation prepared. So you would need to have some uh, credentials should be put here this done. So you have a con configuration on the configuration side, you have a continuous integration. So we need to connect any of this continuous integration. And once it's configured, then act so far.
Yeah, actually, I have a question. So yep. thank you for the presentation, actually. But uh, do we have any other test run status that we can uh, configure uh, other than passed, failed, can be uh, uh, can be configured like blocked or in progress uh, in the mm -hmm. test run? Ah, okay, so you, you mean here? So when we when we when we execute our test cases? Uh, yeah. Okay, so this one, this one. You yeah. Mean, right. so you would like yeah. you would like to customize it. Yeah. Um, no. So we we actually we are, we are providing some capabilities. Uh, we are thinking about the adding this. So we are pro providing this kind of uh, way to add some 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 messages uh, or some explanation to some three three major steps, uh, three major mm -hmm. statuses. But it's it's not implemented. We 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 have this idea, but it's not implemented. Okay. Okay, good to know. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, so we are, we are providing this capability to, for example, for past failed, you see, so you have a different uh, already kind of the explanations that mm -hmm. why do you have some particular steps, right? Uh, the mm -hmm. steps statuses, right? And then okay. you can then you can use it just to define this in a description, not a description, but uh, explain to explanation message to, to the results. Okay. okay. Anything else? Yeah. Oh, no, good. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yep. Yeah, thanks for the presentation. So I wanted to know, like, you know, if you can uh, link uh, one test case to multiple projects. One test case to the multiple projects, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, you mean, uh, are you talking about the automated test cases, right? Or um, the... Manual. Manual, manual. Yeah. So you would, so you would like just to kind of, you would like to reuse your test case, right? Mm -hmm. Because you yeah, have created right. just only yeah. once. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. uh, we at this point of time, we no, we 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 we, we don't have it. We mm -hmm. we uh, we discussed this already. So to to implement some, we call it shared test cases, right? Mm -hmm. So so yeah. it, to to be yes. to be just created just only once and then just mm -hmm. you can put this id of this the case to some particular project but we don't have this yet okay yeah thank you anything else no okay uh, let me then just show you the, the bdd style away okay so let me just create the the, the project uh okay the, the project Okay, I will create the BDD, right? So uh, that's in BDD project. Okay, so on the BDD project, I I also have. Uh, hold on a second. I will just go to the the conception JS and 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 Cucumber project. Okay, so here we will start. Uh, I'm just I'm just wondering from a BD point of view. So, would you like to see some automated test capabilities or the manual capabilities? So here, let let me just 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 to import uh, all the tests that we have, and then I will create the manual test cases. So I will choose the Katsab Uh It will just create some sample data to our project. Okay, it's just taking a few, a few, a few seconds, All right? So, oh, okay. So, uh, some test cases that we have on the uh, on the uh, automated test cases, uh, it's, it's it's done here. So, if you would like just to create, if you would like to create some um, some features, it's called features. And inside of the features, you would like those to create some scenarios. It's called right. So, to, to make this done, you can create the feature file. You would need to call it feature. Let me just make it a little bigger so that is the home uh, home page um that's in capabilities right so here and then you can add some capabilities here so you uh, you would like to describe your scenario so i have some uh, already some bd scenarios prepared so i just can copy and paste and then i will create a few a few more so that is the a few scenarios you see so I will copy this 
and I will paste it. So that we call it the feature mode. So you are creating one feature and inside of the feature, you are creating some, some scenarios. So these scenarios can be different types. So uh, the first one is, is just regular. So you are describing your test cases in, in a, this given event format. So we are providing you capabilities with uh, intelligent auto completion. For example, when you type N of N, uh, or then, then you have the auto completion based on the steps database. I will show you in a minute how it looks like. Looks like, right? So then, based on these examples, you can describe these scenarios. So if you would like to define, for example, the parameterized test case, which is called the scenario outline, right? So in, on the scenario outline, you would need to put this uh, the the scenario. You would need to define these special parameters, right? And then you have the example tables, right? So it means that three data sets are, are already attached to this um, scenario outline. Then you you may have the, the formatting um, uh, functionality here. So when you will save it, so uh, you will have all the test cases created. So in, in, in just in one click, all the four test cases. And then you have these capabilities to, to see, okay, hold the whole feature file right or you can go to one particular test case and see that okay this that is the description of your particular scenario so when we have moved all our automated bdd steps right or bdd test cases we have created everything on on our steps database so you see we have some already steps created here so we on the on the GitHub on the GitHub where would we have GitHub here, right? We have GitHub on the GitHub. We have the the feature files. Hold on, hold on a second. It's not it's not the PDD. That is the one, and then we need to have uh, features, right? That is the features, right? That is the features. When we have moved all these automated test cases, then we introspect all these scenarios and all these steps are um, actually collected and uh, they are sorted by the test mat. And we have this steps database uh, the defined and generated from automated test cases. And once we have the steps database, uh, we uh, we are usually recommend our clients just to build as much as possible these um, steps you would like to use for your test cases that describe your application. And then once you would like to go and edit or update your test cases, right, then you have the auto completion, right? Because currently we have created new test cases. I just copied, and these steps are not in steps database. We are showing okay, this step is not defined. Just in one click, you can add these steps to, to the steps database, right? So it's it's just added and added and added and so on and so forth. If you would like to add, right? So if you would like to go and add it some and add some some given, given some step, then some step and then some step right so then you have this automation uh, so auto completion capabilities that means that everything is populated to you so then you can just choose so what actions you would like to do for example i see and you you understand that okay you would need to choose just only one from this right and then it will be totally so fine and it will be compatible also with other descriptions the the biggest pain i would say with bdd scenarios where you need to manage your steps database generally so to make this done actually we created the steps database right so um uh, yeah in, in in this way so if if we if we will add the uh, the jira also we have the same capabilities actually uh, to the jira plugin so from one side you can you can uh, describe your manual test cases and execute this on the testament side and then you can link to the jira and from another side is you have the same capabilities here if it's if it's bdd project right so then you have this auto completion uh, in the jira plugin right so for to 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 make this done so you would need to configure your project and then uh from another from one side uh, business analyst can describe these scenarios from a jira perspective right and from another side you can work with these scenarios 
uh, with these scenarios actually uh, from test mat, right? So you have two two mods, right? So you can you can work with a with a feature as a whole file, right? So if you would like to do a lot of different changes at the same time to whole feature, right? To the different scenarios, but at the same time, for example, here you can uh, add. Uh, delete in what one step and here you would like to add one more step and one more step right so that is the the, the um, editing feature mode right and if you would like just to edit some particular test case then you can use it so if some some uh, steps are used a lot so you have a filter so you can see the, okay what given what when and then steps you already have it Right, so if you click on it, you see the examples of the usage of this uh, of this particular step uh, in the different test cases. So um, yeah, Hold on a second, so something is broken. I'm on the beta. So anyway, uh, yeah, so you can you can go to the you can go to the uh, some particular usage of this step. And hold on a second, let me just refresh to see if it's if it's working. No. Yeah. Mm, okay. So that is the example of usage, right? So, and then you see, go, you go to the particular scenario and see, okay, you have some, you have some um, uh, examples of usage of this particular step. Also, if you have, uh, for example, here, you have the automated test cases, which is already done, right? But uh, you have this uh, the way the application is changed and you would need to make some changes to uh, to the test cases, but it's already automated test case uh, and it's hold just only in the repository, right? So then we can go and edit this test case, right? That is the automated one. I just would like to focus. So you see we have the out of the sync label here, which means that, uh, okay, that is the implementation, that is scenario code, we call it. And from another side, you have the description and something is changed. So the description is uh, is different from implementation, you see? So that's why we are showing you, okay, there is some differences and you can check these differences, right? Okay, now that is the, the primarily, I would say that the, the, the functionality regarding the, the, the BDD. Maybe you have some particular question regarding BDD. But yeah. No. No. All, all good. Yeah. Um, just to maybe like a small like concern, like you showed that we can add the steps to the database, right? Yeah. Uh, it, and I saw you were like adding it step by step. Uh, I think it would be nice to have um, like some kind of bulk adding to the step database. Okay, so if you if you if you if you added it also just one in one click, yeah. just to add all the steps to set Something database. Like yes, this. yeah, yeah and, so. if, and if this step exists, uh, then it would just skip it and add the next one. No, if if it's if it's already yeah, if it's already existed, you see, so you don't have this label if it's already existed, right? So yeah. if it's not, then you have it. Yeah, so we can add just one one button here to add everything to the to the step yeah. database. So just in one yeah, click. So, so so it's it's mostly uh, as I understood it's working like a classic project. This BDD project mostly works as classic project, but it's more more um, focused on the steps and Gherkin and BDD and everything. Yeah, like yeah. That. So it's more about yeah. It, I would say uh, if we're talking about the design, so it's more uh, so on the classical one. Uh, you have the markdown support on the BDD. You have this Gherkin support, right? So with this special auto completion, this. Uh, steps and showing you some okay which is not covered or covered and, and that's all but if we're talking about the analytics execution all the other stuff it's the same kind of yeah. it's no matter it's classical obdd so it's just working the same way yeah it looks nice yeah thanks thank you okay um anything else you would like to ask me no I guess no, right? So, um, okay, so I I didn't show the, the, the much information. So we have the, the, the executions, uh, the, the templates. We also have the notifications. 
on uh, on email we have notifications on uh, slack and and ms teams uh, and also a, a lot of different functionality so but i guess it's not for today's session so if you have any questions just i i just um, would like to ask you so to go to the roadmap so we have a public roadmap we have a change log so if you like to check what we have delivered so far we have documentation you can go through and check the there are a lot of information defined there. So um, if you would like to make some particular demonstration for your company, for your team, and specifically for your team, you can schedule this demo. So it will be kind of the same I, I've done, but specifically for your team, right? And you can follow us on a, on a Twitter. We post a lot, right, regarding our changes. And we uh messaging a lot in uh, slack so if you would like to talk to us directly through the instant messaging tool right so that is the the, the slack or you can use in effect you can use the the mm -hmm. email right so you can write an email to us so we will reply to you i guess that's all so uh if nobody has some questions Oh, I'm not here. You. Okay, so I think we have done. So, so thank you for your time. So thank you for joining this call. Sorry for, for this interruption with this internet interruption. I hope it was useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask us through the, any channel you will find. Okay, thank you for, for this for this call and see you. Bye-bye. Bye. See you. Bye.